we actually have another iGen friend who has been helping us with the DNA synthesis for all DNA parts that submitted from iGEM teams. Thanks, for, thanks to Twist, all the iGEM teams no longer have to ship their physical parts to iGEM HQ starting in 2019. I guess some of the PIs may still remember that old competition requirements a bit stressful. Of course, DNA synthesis can be applied to many more challenges and applications. So let's welcome Emily Leproust, CEO and co-founder at Twist Bioscience onto the main stage. Welcome, Emily. Thank you very much. I am very, very excited to be here. I love iGEM. I think what you're doing is incredible. And at Twist, we try to be um, here to help you. So in my view, you are Batman, and we are Robin. And so we're, we're really uh, yeah, your, your assistant. And so um, obviously, uh, DNA is very important, and uh, DNA is changing the world. And what we do at Twist is once you have a sequence, uh, we build the technology to go into a tube. So we have the uh, digital to real life uh, converter. And uh, with that, uh, there's a lot of things that can be done. And in my talk today, I'll talk, uh, the first part will be about the tools that we have at Twist. And then the second part will be more about uh, what can be done with them. Um, but as a preview, I uh, really have a, a strong, I feel very strongly that everything. Uh, can be impacted for the better with DNA. DNA is kind of like a, a hammer, and uh, everything looks like a nail. And the uh, hundreds of iGEM teams uh, are working in some of those great applications. So uh, as I mentioned, at Twist, we write DNA. And uh, we've built a technology uh, to uh, really push forward uh, the, the state of DNA synthesis. On the left, I'm showing how uh, DNA and genes used to be made. It's, uh, people use a 96 web plate, and the chemistry of writing DNA is very well known. It's been published in 1982. It's been optimized over thousands of years of grad student. I put in my four years, um, but uh, you can, now you can buy a bottle of A, a bottle of C, a bottle of G, a bottle of T, and you, know, you combine them and you get any DNA sequence you want. The problem with uh, a 96 web plate is the throughput and in my view, is too low, and the cost is too high. And so what we've done at Twist is we have developed a silicon uh, chip, which is the same size as a 96 well plate. But instead of making 96 oligos, we can make 1 million oligos on the silicon chip. And those million oligos are clusters in uh, uh, 10,000 clusters of 100 oligos. And then we can do molecular biology in each of those clusters. Uh, such that we can assemble uh, oligos into higher uh, size DNA. If you want to get a sense of, of dimension, um, each of our million oligos is made on a uh, dimension of 50 micron. That is the size of one hair, right? So it's extremely packed. And, and then we use a silicon chip to make all the others for all the researchers at the same time on the same chip. And so we've also built a um, very sophisticated software infrastructure to be able to track all of that work. And so the miniaturization really gives us something that is unique, which is more scale, lower cost, and, uh, and uh, also more speed. And so to illustrate the benefit of miniaturization, uh, we've uh, actually engaged the outside firms to measure the carbon emission that it takes to make one gene. And uh, on the right, you can see that in the, with the standard 96 web plate to make one gene, it uh, is the equivalent of driving one car for 59 miles. Um, but with a miniaturized approach, uh, making one gene is the equivalent of driving a car for 0 0.92 miles. So if you get one gene uh, a day from Twist, you save your commute away. And it, it really exemplifies the power of the technology. The, be beyond just the, the miniaturization, we're also working on improving uh, the products. And so one of the things we work very hard on is on uh, quality. And, uh, <coughs> um, and, and uh, before I get there, there's one more slide. Uh, not only we make genes, um, 
and those genes can be uh, non-clonal as fragments, or they can be clonal. Uh, we also make oligo pools, so there you can get um, from 100 oligos to a million oligos. But that's very powerful in uh, CRISPR experiments if you want to do uh, genome-wide experiments to associate a phenotype with a genotype. Uh, we also can make uh, very uh, uh, precise libraries for enzyme engineering uh, or antibody engineering. And then we are also going to the pharma area where we had a lot of uh, customers that were uh, getting DNA from us, but then expressing an, a protein, an IgG. <coughs> and now we also can uh, ship an IgG, so we'll do the expression for you. So the next few slides, I'll show some of the, in uh, the investment we've made. And the, as I mentioned earlier, the first one is in quality. In the bottom right, uh, we are uh, showing uh, the percent of perfect clone as you increase the length of a gene fragment. So that's a non-clonal fragment. And uh, <coughs> you can see that even at uh, 1,800 bases, uh, more than 50% uh, of the clone that you pick are perfect. Um, there's also another dimension, which is speed. Uh, uh, a lot of what you do is around the design, build, test, learn cycle. And so the faster you can get the DNA, the faster you can uh, get to the learn, learning part. And on the right, you can see that uh, this is regular. This is data from our production side where um, <coughs> you can get uh, gene fragments in three days average, and 90% of the fragments ship in, in four days. Uh, another uh, investment that we've made is around clonal genes. So now it's your gene in your vector. And uh, we are, the, the turnaround time for this is uh, about 10 days. Uh, however, in, uh, in the next few weeks, we we'll launch a express um, uh, offering where you can get a clonal gene in five days. So it's your gene in your vector in five days in a way that's very inexpensive. It's, it's clonal perfect. And you can order one or you can order 1,000 or 10,000. It's really, really scalable and with very little carbon emissions. <coughs> and so some of the uh, applications for that beyond just assembling genetic circuits, we have a lot of our customers that take DNA to express uh, IgG. And so now you can get IgG in 10 days. Um, <coughs> you've heard about RNA now being a very important new modality for therapies. And um, you can get uh, to uh, mRNA in two days. Uh, <coughs> and as uh, uh, researchers develop vaccine, RNA vaccines to get cancer, even personalized vaccine, uh, this is a very powerful tool. Um, and then last, in terms of the, the, the tools that we're developing, our oligo pools used to be up to uh, 300 base pair which was uh, very powerful because you could get two guide RNA together into a, uh, an oligo. Now we are uh, expanding our oligo pool offering where we can go all the way to 450 base pair. And uh, for those of you that, that may have synthesized your own oligos, you may be aware that the, the, the last 100 bases is the hardest part. And uh, so it's, it's a real big push. And with 400 base pair oligos, uh, you're able to encode a, a full heavy chain or light chain uh, in, one, in one shot. So um, we think that that's going to accelerate uh, the work to, for uh, antibody discovery uh, and so on. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll switch to uh, our effort to, to support I IGEM. Um, <coughs> we are very excited uh, that uh, last year or this year, 120 team uh, used uh, fragments and uh, oligo pools from, from Twist. And we, we did uh, some uh, uh, calculation. And over the last few months, uh, we shipped uh, more than half a billion bases uh, to iGEM team. Right? So it's an um, it's a, it's a absolutely massive amount of, uh, of uh, DNA. And we're very, very much excited with uh, what you have done uh, with it. And so in the last part of the talk, I'll, I'll, I'll speak about some applications that uh, I think uh, could be transformative for the world. And um, uh, I think you, as iGEMers, um, uh, have had an impact. And as we, you go into your career, will have a huge impact. And there's really three big problems that I think we have to, to, to fix. And we'll fix, we'll fix those problems thanks to the massive amount of brain power uh, in this room. And the first problem is really the problem of pollution. 
uh, we, we are living a lifestyle that uh, relies a lot on, on plastic, relies on uh, fossil fuel that are extracted. Uh, we use those materials for a fleeting moment, and then they go in, uh, in, in, in dumpsters in, in, uh, and to live for a very long time. And so I think um, uh, we'll talk about that, but uh, a lot of uh, what, what uh, <coughs> you do and, and iGemers can impact this, this problem. A second problem that uh, we have to face and that we can uh, impact positively is the, is the problem of hunger. And especially as climate change um, uh, continues to accelerate the change, uh, we'll see that um, uh, we'll need to adapt plants uh, to different weathers, to different pests, to different diseases. And there's a, there's a, a lot that we can do to ensure that um, <coughs> the world is, is, is fed. And then the last area where uh, iGemers uh, will impact is uh, the diagnostics and the eradication of, of diseases. Um, and uh, thanks to synthetic biology and uh, the power of the brain power of iGemer, I think uh, to collectively, will be able to um, uh, decrease human suffering. So in the next few slides, uh, I think I have five slides till the end of my talk, and I just have a, a few questions that I'm asking the IGMR and, and maybe challenge you to uh, help with the answers. And so the first one is back to uh, feeding the world. Um, <coughs> uh, can we grow food where people are? Because right now, food is grown in fields, uh, and even if we can um, <coughs> enhance the, the yield, decrease the uh, amount of, of uh, fertilizer or pesticides that are being used, uh, you still have to transport them. And uh, <coughs> as we look into the future, uh, I think there is an opportunity to grow food where people are. And can you grow, in this case, nutri nutritious rice or other food where people are uh, in, in the apartment? And <coughs> I think. Uh, someone from iGEM will, will, will solve the, this problem. The second question is, um, can you uh, adjust food, right? Can you make kale taste good? Um, <coughs> I like kale, but not everybody does. Uh, and so not only can you bring nutrition, but can you, throw, can you bring delight in uh, the food that we all consume? The, the next question is back to pollution. Um, I think one of the big problems is that we, have a, uh, we live in an economy that is based on plastic. And uh, my vision is I think we can move to an economy that is based on protein. Um, uh, our body is made of protein, and you can engineer protein uh, to, be, uh, to have whatever physical properties you want. You can have, have them uh, elastic or hard or, or soft or transparent or flexible. And, um, uh, even though the last 100 years has been the century of plastic, I think the next 100 years we have an opportunity to make it the century of protein. And uh, what that means is that it will, be a, uh, it will be a world that is more sustainable, and uh, <coughs> I think it will be a world that it will be also more rich in more material. And so I think um, the, the team and the people of IGM, as they grow into their career in industry, in academia, um, you'll have an, in, an opportunity to uh, make this happen, make sure that we don't need to pump uh, oil from the ground anymore. And so to do that, uh, you know, we'll have to uh, look at, at carbon as a system. And uh, <coughs> uh, carbon is responsible for global uh, uh, climate change. Um, but carbon is not a problem. The problem is that uh, the carbon is in the wrong place. Carbon is in, in the atmosphere instead of um, helping us make material, helping our lifestyle. Um, and so there's a, um, a lot of work that uh, I think we can do to redirect and make sure that carbon is used in a circular economy. And if we do that right, I think um, we'll be able to lower the temperature of the planet to where it needs to be. And I think someone in this room uh, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and uh, I'll skip this slide in the interest of time. Uh, something else that I think someone in this room is going to be, uh, someone is going to make cancer a chronic disease. 
Um, it's, it's long overdue. We, we have the example with AIDS. Uh, AIDS used to be a, a death sentence. And now, uh, as the virus is evolving uh, because of, of, of uh, uh, therapies, sequencing is used to see how the virus is evolving. And then different drugs, different cocktails are used to make sure that the virus is under control. I think the same thing can happen with, with cancer. Cancer doesn't have to be a uh, <coughs> uh, uh, death sentence. Uh, as cancer gets treated as it is recurrent, if we can develop personalized uh, cancer treatment based on the power of synthetic biology, I think someone in this room will, will make cancer a chronic disease, and, and that, that will be a huge impact to, to, the, to humanity. In the same area of disease, there are also a, a big uh, uh, issue with um, rare disease, with genetic disease. Those are uh, diseases that are you know, quite rare, and therefore there is not a lot of, of investment in, uh, in fixing them. But there is some amazing example. You may have heard of, of uh, the recent uh, sickle cell treatment that um, uh, is, is a massive improvement in quality of life. And I think uh, if we use the power of synthetic biology, uh, we'll be able to one by one uh, go and, and find a treatment for all of those genetic diseases. And so uh, <coughs> I think it's my last, uh, last example. Um, in disease, uh, we, we've seen what happened in a, in a pandemic with COVID, and uh, <coughs> I think through the tools of synthetic biology, we'll be able to leverage uh, the, the amazing computing power and the amazing cameras that we have on our iPhone to be able to use our iPhone to diagnose and, and detect uh, infectious disease faster in the future. So really, the, the, there's so many things that can be done. Um, uh, the world is uh, uh, in great need of your imagination that you've seen, that, that you've shown in your iGEM team. And again, as you grow uh, and uh, you turn into more Alec that we just heard, uh, we can really use your imagination and, uh, and, and what you can impact on the world. And so I really uh, encourage you to try to find yourself uh, amongst the greats. Um, <coughs> I'm sure that many of you uh, will be on that picture when you know, I come back five, ten years from now. I know you can do it. The world um, needs it, and the world uh, deserves it. So with that, I, I really uh, I, uh, ask you to think about what parts you will play. And when you decide that part, when you decide what kind of Robin, uh, what, sorry, what kind of Batman you're going to be, then come to Twist and will be uh, your, your Robin to help you get there. So with that, I'll thank you very much, and uh, <coughs> looking forward to this day. Thank you.